21, doing a verse number 15, the Bible says, when they had finished eating, Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of John, do you love me more than these? Yes, Lord, he said, you know that I love you. Jesus said, be my sheep. Again, Jesus said, Simon, son of John, do you love me? He answered, yes, Lord, you know that I love you. Jesus said, take care of my sheep. The third time he said, son, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Peter was hurt because Jesus asked him the third time, do you love me? And he said, Lord, you know all things. You know that I love you. And Jesus said, be my sheep. Let me talk to you uh, for a very few months on a very simple thought today, on a very simple thought, unconditional love. Amen. Amen. Yes. Yes. This morning, yes. for a few minutes on the subject of eternal title, I think is needed right now uh, in this season, unconditional love. Yes. Somebody say unconditional love. Unconditional love. I'm going to be real honest and real with y'all today. And I got this sermon title. Uh, from one of my favorite artists, one of my favorite musicians uh, that I love to listen to. Y'all just pray with me, okay, man. Mm -hmm. He's one of my favorite musicians. I'm going for him this morning. It won't be the, it won't be it won't be the Mighty Clouds of Joy. It won't be um, it won't be Marvin Sapp. But my, one of my favorite artists, Sister Wilson, uh, is a brother uh, by the name of Tupac Shakur. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Tupac Shakur, one of my favorite songs by Tupac. It's a song entitled. Uh, Reverend Gaucher, unconditional love, unconditional love. And he says, this is important, and he says, taking a, talking about the stuff that don't wear off, it don't fade, it lasts all these crazy days, these crazy nights. Whether you wrong or right, I still love you. Uh, he says, still feel you, still there for you, no matter what, you will always be in my heart with unconditional love. And then he goes on to say some more stuff. Uh, he says, how many cases uh, can we witness before we see it's hard to live in this life without God? So we must ask forgiveness. That's my mind. I got how I got the urge to die witness the tears falling free uh, from before she could reply. And then he goes on to say, he says, one day I hope I make it. Even in this life, I know mama things are going to change. He says, but what we got to do is that we got to remember that we got to have unconditional love, Amen. unconditional love, unconditional love. He says that in this life, things will get difficult. Yes. And got no witnesses in this church today. In this life, times will get hard. Yes. In this life, there will be days that will come that it looks like the sun won't ever shine. Uh, but you got to understand that there are always different seasons in life and that you got to understand that when you are going through those seasons, that's the time when you need to experience unconditional love. Right. That's not the time that folks need to talk about you. That's not the time that you need to be stabbed in the back. That's not the time uh, when you need uh, to be wondering if you got any friends in the world. In fact, I've come by you today, Amos, to say that if you know that there is a church member that's going through some stuff, that's going through a bad season, that's the time when you should call them on the phone, make sure that you're touching bases with them, making sure that you are always letting them know that I love you unconditionally. I love you unconditionally. And, and so what is unconditional love? I'm glad you asked that. This is in the text. This is a very brilliant and beautiful text uh, that's given and provided to us by John. There's a few things that I want you to see uh, in this text. I think it, uh, once you look at it carefully uh, and cautiously, you will see uh, that the power of the conversation that has taken place uh, with Jesus and Peter. The setting of the text uh, is in the last days, watch this, of the post-resurrection Jesus. What do you mean by post-resurrection Jesus? I'm glad you asked. Post-resurrection meaning that this is when Jesus comes to them after he's resurrected from the dead. Y'all stay with me, I'm going somewhere. And so he comes and he appears to his disciples on the shores of the Sea of Galilee. And he prepares a breakfast for them, and he's commissioned them, uh, they send them out in the water to catch more fish. Uh, then he comes uh, to his boy Peter, and he comes to Peter and he begins to have a conversation only with Peter. 
And so the first thing I want you to see is that he gives, and we discussed this morning, when we talk about unconditional love, we want to talk about, first of all, the conditions of love. But what is the condition of love? Good question. The condition of love is that it ought to be unconditional. Yeah, right. 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 I just prayer this morning in this house and this Methodist church today. So is that the understanding that in order to have the what is the condition of love is that it ought to be unconditional. It ought to be unconditional. And so it, what do you mean by unconditional? Well, unconditional means that it's not based on conditions. Can't get no can't get no more simple than that. Can't get no more simple. That you it ought not be predicated on the if statement. I will love you if love is not based on if. Love is based on I'm loving you no matter what. Somebody shout unconditional love. There, there, there are times, in fact, beloved, when you ought to love people that you don't even like. Jesus demands that I love everybody, but sometimes there's some folk that get on your nerve. Can I get some help in this house today? But it doesn't matter. Even if folk get on your nerve, even if you don't like them, you still ought to be able to give them a hug and say, Sister, I love you. Brother, I, I appreciate you. Because I'll tell you something, there is always something in everybody you can find something good about. I need some help in here this morning. I'm almost done. But here it is. Is that he said it's unconditional. It's unconditional. Look at what Jesus says. I want you to look at the text. Very interesting. Uh, Brother, if you look at verse 15, the Bible says, uh, he says, Simon, Simon, son of John. Now watch this. Now, that, now you don't, you, you, don't, you probably can't really understand and appreciate how deep that is. Because notice, he says, Peter, son of John. That phrase, Peter, son of John, watch this, is a patronum, patronum, patronomic statement. Patronomic statement. What's a patronomic statement? I'm glad you asked that. A patronomic statement is that it is a statement referring to the patriarch of your family. Don't miss this. So he's, he's referring to him by his daddy's name. That's not what I really want you to hear. When, you, when somebody redresses you by your father's name, by a patronomic statement, it is based Basically saying when you start by stating who some father, somebody's father is, it is simple, it is similar to meeting somebody for the first time. Okay, y'all ain't getting it right. I'm letting help y'all out. Why would Jesus, why would Jesus uh, be referred to Peter as if he met him for the first time? Let's ask. If you go back a few more, five more days before that, or you go back four more chapters, you remember Jesus was talking to his boys one day, and he said, look, he looked at, he looked at Peter, he said, Peter, you're going to deny me one day. He said, look, God, I got your back. You know, I'm going to ride or die. I ain't ever going to let you down. You ain't even got to worry about me. So I'm going to turn around you, but I got you. I'm your boy. Don't worry about it. He said, you're going to deny me three times. He said, no, Jesus, that ain't going to happen. And then when Jesus was in a crisis, and Peter was put on the spot, they said, uh, you know him. He said, no, I don't know him. <laughs> Amen. Right. Your friends like that, you don't need no enemies. Right. Is it, is it, no, you look like you've been with no, no, I ain't never seen that dude. I don't know who he is. And then, is it the third time? Is it, no, we saw you with him. And then he started doing what some of y'all do when folk get you upset. <laughs> don't try to act for me and sacrifice me like y'all ain't never cursing my life before. Amen. He started using some of those words. It's some of those words that we find that ain't in the dictionary. And so Jesus says, look, he says, he says, because of the fact that when I need you as a friend, I'm not Have the audacity to ignore what 
I've done for you? Yes. Is there anybody in the house that Jesus has done some things for in your life? Is anybody in the house that Jesus has ever brought from a mighty long way? Is there anybody that has been, you've been through some storms? Even if you're going through hell right now, don't forget when you were not going through hell. So here is Jesus, look. And then he comes. Uh, uh, that's the condition of his love. He said, look. But I'm still. This guy going to love this. He said, look. Even though you acted like you didn't know me. The subscript in your Bible ought to be the reading statement of Peter. Why does it say that? Well, because Jesus said, look. You acted like you don't know me. But I'm still talking to you. Right. Right. He says, look, and there's another passage when he came back in another gospel. He says, go back and get this after Peter denied him and he resurrected. He says, go back and get the disciples and Peter. Uh -huh. Y'all missed it. Look, he could have basically left the dude alone. Yeah. He could have gone to John and James and one of the other guys that didn't trip. He could have gone to somebody else, but instead he went to Peter because he said, look, even though you act like you don't know me, I'm still going to call your name. I'm still you are still going to look beyond your faults and see your needs. Is there anybody in the house that can shout, even though when I've been messed up, when I ignore God, at least God still called my name. At least God still acknowledged me because God loves me. He looks beyond our faults and see my needs. It's unconditional love. All right. All right now. That's how good God is. Yes, yes he is. Because the many times that you let God down, God still says, where is there? The many times you let God down, God says, God still says, uh, where is Alvin? When the many times you let God down, God says, where is Sister Break or Reverend Break? God is still looking for you, even when you are not re even when you are, he ought not have a reason to look for you. But then here he is, I got times that that's there's so much need here. Look at what the text says. That's the condition of his love. The conception of love. What do you mean by that, Pastor? Hey, what is what really is the idea of love? Look at the text. I need y'all to follow me. It's getting ready to get real deep right now, right? Follow me. I need you to put your thing caps on. Just give me about five minutes to get a little deep here. He says, Simon John, uh, Simon, son of John. Look at what the text says. I'm going to show you something. He says, verse 15, do you love me more than these? He said, yes, Lord, I love you. He said, feed my sheep. Simon, son of John, do you love me? Me more than these. Yes, Lord, feed my sheep. So he asked me three times, Simon, do you love me? Now watch this. It doesn't really help you if you read it from the English. So I'm going to read it for you how it's written in the Greek. Is that okay? Y'all yeah. yeah, read with me for a second because you're going to appreciate this. He says, Simon, or he's, in some translation it says, Simon Peter. Basically, Peter, do you love me? Peter replies, yes, Lord, I love you. That ain't be by itself. But let me read, let me quote it to you in the Greek. In the Greek it is Hore Petros, Agape C. Peter, do you love me? Peter replies, Hore Kurios, Philo C. Yes, Jesus, I love you. Y'all quiet, sorry, I'm gonna help y'all in about five minutes. Yes, it is, look. Hore Petros, Agape C. Peter, do you love me? Peter's reply is, Hoy, curious, philo, see. Yes. yes, Lord, I love you, okay? That's why it's going on here. head. Jesus uses agape for the word of love. Peter replies with philo, which is brotherly love. Jesus, y'all ain't shouting. Jesus, look, Peter, do you love me unconditionally? Peter should have replied, Lord, I love you unconditionally.
love the people by our words and by our attitudes. People will leave the church faster by lack of love and demonstration of love. So I'm asking you today to make this a brand new moment in your life where you want Jesus to know that you love him unconditionally.